Today, I'm joined by Hiram from 69 to 4A and Liam from 10A to R. And we're going to be looking over a match from China. And to start with, our guest today is quite special. He is from Mexico. Do you want to talk a little bit about, you know, competition and competing in VEX uh, in Mexico and, you know, how, how tournaments work there or like, you know, what's different? Uh, yeah, in Mexico, we have uh, signatures in the north of the country, and well, is is very good. Uh, the robots are very creative because the most of them uh, don't have like uh, uh, events kit. Like uh, the, the most of the teams don't have pneumatics, so, so it's it's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's great how to the engineering is work on their minds and do something cool like that. Uh, yeah, I love that. I love how like, you know, they really work around problems and that really just like provides them an opportunity, right, to learn, you know, how how real life engineering works. I like I love that. Yeah. Uh, the last awards we compete without pneumatics and we won judge awards so is is good uh, i think i yeah, don't know that's amazing that's amazing i i love to hear that yeah that's i really hope to see like more more tournaments as well just there because i know like not not a lot of teams from the u.s go to like the, the signature events in mexico right yeah uh we for example we uh, assist just to two tournaments and I know that uh, the other teams uh, from America goes to I don't know uh, five or more tournaments so it's amazing that yeah yeah I, some teams I know even from California went to like 14 and that was really crazy it went from like yeah. upwards of like 18 tournaments and yeah. how is like designs uh, currently in, in Mexico and like how do they how do you guys like approach designs is there anything different I know, like with the the restrictions on like pneumatics being like there being less availability of that, that's definitely a thing that you guys have to you know consider. Um, well, uh, this season uh, we have pneumatics, so we are trying to uh, be more like competitive robots of America. But I don't know uh, because the other teams from Mexico. Uh, didn't say too much from his robots, but I think that he are betting for uh, like a cloud bot. I don't know, like something like this. Mm -hmm. I'm oh. not sure. Yeah, well, can you tell He's... us a little bit about like what you're what you're planning on building and like what you're designing right now? Uh, yeah, um, we have a uh, hook intake. Um, we are not for wall stakes yet because we are centering in the moguls. Yeah, that's understandable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and too fast, fast. Uh, so the driver is uh, practicing in that. And maybe when we have solved that part of the challenge, uh, we center on moguls. Yeah, that's a really good and idea. Wall sticks, mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, looking at this match, definitely, like, you don't really need to really prioritize the wall stakes, right? Like, if you have good defense, right? One thing I really suggest for teams uh, like y'all that, you know, are focusing more on, you know, goals and scoring rings on those goals, on those mobile goals, is just focusing on defense, right? Like, you know, he's it takes a, a good team, even even a good team, a while to score a ring on those wall stakes. So I th feel like you guys can just, you know, ha uh, call out to your driver, Right and be like, hey, they're about to score on the on the wall stakes. Go defend them, right? You know, you can really easily knock rings out of people's current wall stake mix. What are your thoughts on that? I don't know how to say. Uh, is this okay. match is what I what I uh, what I'm planning that to uh, center on the strategic and defense uh, the the goals and the corners and maybe flip out the third goal. Yeah, yeah, that that that's a yeah. Like I said, that's a good idea. But I mean, what I was thinking, for, sorry, but I was thinking for the third goal is like, I mean, you would really only do that when you're, you know, doing a, a lot of wall stake play. What do you think about this, Liam? 
Um, can you repeat that? Oh, just like flipping the third goal whenever you're doing wall stake play because if you have like, if you have more stuff to worry about, uh, then you know you have to juggle around playing the third goal and also wall stakes. Mm-hmm. But then if you only just if you just flip, flip the the third goal right away, then you can really take advantage of your wall stakes. Yeah, well, also something you can do is what you see in the the top right with the green robot doing with defending one goal and then the other red robot is possessing a goal. So they still maintain control of the three goals. The problem with flipping over the goal where like in the new rules, it does allow you to flip over goals and it still count for points unless it's in the positive zone. However, it's fairly easy to flip over because uh, most of its weight is shifted at the bottom. It's kind of like... um, the Russian nesting dolls. Wait, no, no, it's not. not <laughs> he said flip back over. Yeah, what yeah. are those things that I forgot what they're called? But it, it just has all its weight centered at the bottom, so it's easy to flip back up. So I wouldn't rely on leaving your goal left alone once it flipped over. I would do what's happening here, where they have one person protecting two goals and then one holding the other goal. Yeah, that that's true too. Yeah, that that was, uh, that's also good. But what are your thoughts on like flipping a goal that's full on rings over like your own goal? You flip it over and you point it in a direction where it's really hard to get out the corner. Uh, I would say that's really good in situations like uh, in quals where you don't really have control over how good your teammate is, and it's a really quick way for you to surprise your opponents by. Uh, being able to flip over one goal and then go dart for another goal, then they have to worry about flipping it back over, which you can play defense on them while while they do, and that could just make it really hard for them and and just put them in a position they're not used to playing in, which can give you a huge advantage. Yeah, absolutely, I like that. And do you have uh, do you have anything more to share, uh, Hiram? Um. No, uh, that's what I'm thinking. What is, what I, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, I mean, like, with the new rules, uh, we can flip over and we don't have problems with the score. And we are uh, thinking more in uh, qualification match because uh, you don't have uh, control of your alliance. So maybe you have a good alliance and or a bad and we we won't have the control of the more wins possible as po- as possible yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah that, that's that's to- totally correct well i think that's all the time we have right now thank you for joining us <laughs>